All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is the July 3rd, 2024 meeting of Northampton Urban Forestry Commission. This is our summer schedule. We will have one more meeting uh, the first Wednesday of August. Um, uh, the meeting is being presently being recorded. Um, public comment. Uh, the only person from the public is Kent. Hello, Kent. Do you have any comments? No, nothing for me today. Okay, you're just in observation mode today. I am. Okay. Maybe I'll chime in on the setback program. Okay, perfect. Um, did I sent the minutes out along with the agenda? And I also want to apologize. I sent you sent you the right agenda, but it had the wrong heading. It's not an amended agenda. Oh. It's a regular agenda, and I just keep doing cut, copy, paste, and I just went right over my head. So I'll fix it though. I have a big note, sticky note to take care of that. Um, did uh, the commissioners have a chance to review the minutes? And if you have, wonderful. If you haven't, please take the time to do so. I'm done. I'm finished here, so. I'm done as well. Rich is done. Just waiting for Sue. No rush, Sue. Oh, I was muted. I'm done. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um... Does anyone have any corrections to the minutes? I've, I've got a correction. I think it's the, the third bullet under the tree warden report. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a spelling error. It should be national grid. Oh. But then the next sentence, Jen wondered if there's any recourse. I, I believe she was talking about the businesses on King Street that lopped off the top of their trees. So the, this bullet confuses the, the lot behind uh, Speedway and the King Street trees. Yeah, the way we probably would phrase that is Jen wondered if there were, uh, was, uh, is any recourse regarding the trees in front of uh, the other, let's see, the trees in front Leah. of Leah, Leah Toyota. Leah, right, right. Yep. Leah something. Honda, maybe? The, yeah, since all the oh, other. Toyota. Big, it's Toyota, yeah. yeah. Yep. Have. No, it's Honda. I'm sorry. Well, there's there's two. There's Leah everything, but there's Toyota and Honda. So you could just say Leah Toyota because that's the ones that are pretty, they're all pretty bad, I should say, but. Okay. Any, any anyone else have any? Recommended changes. <laughs> okay. Could I get a motion to... Bonnie, are you good with those? Could I get a motion to... Yes, Sue. I'll make a motion. Perfect. To, um, accept the meeting minutes. I'll, I'll second that. All right. We now, should I vote since I wasn't here? You can. It's fine. Okay. So you can do whatever. You can abstain, but you, you're allowed to vote. Um, I'll so, abstain since I wasn't here. 
Okay, so let's. Um, there's no discussion on the floor. Could I get a roll call, Bonnie? Please. Absolutely. Rich Parasoliti. Yes. Susan Lofthouse. I think that was a yes. Thumbs yes. up. <laughs> Molly Hale. Abstain. Um, David Lukens. Yes. Richard Parrish. Yes. And Jennifer. We're doing oh. the minutes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I read them. Yes. Okay. Yes. I. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All yep. right. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay. Let me just find my agenda. Um, before I start the, our, are we going to have, we will have a quorum our first Wednesday of the month is in August. Will everyone be here? At least four commissioners. Does anyone have any vacation or. Give me a second. Let me just see when I get back. And hey, what's that date? Um, good. That would be helpful now, wouldn't it? I told you what the date was. It's August 7th. August 7th. Yep. Thank I you. I will not be here. Okay. No, Jen. I'm not going to be around either on that date. Okay. No, David. Any Anyone else have a conflict? Molly. If, if well, it, it could be a week that I might go on vacation. Okay. I'm trying to see if there's any other ones that are possible. Um, I can probably work around it. Yeah, I, I mean, can commit. I can be there if need be. Okay. Well, we'll have if uh, we will have a quorum if um, Sue, myself, Rich, and Jordan show up. But I mean, that's a pretty slim margin of a yeah you know, no leeway uh, yeah so i mean i think let's let's just get a little close i mean i'll send an email out towards the end of july and we'll just see what goes on I, i'm i will be here but the the ninth i'm um i'm leaving for two weeks to go to georgia so so i can be here mm -hmm. um okay. i think i could be here i could do the vacation the week after Well, you can you can just let me know. Okay. At least I sort of have rough have rough uh, I uh, idea who's not going to be here. Okay. Or who will be here? Uh, okay. So let's see. Public come here. Chair report. Okay. So yes, the I just want to follow up with the public shelter here on Turkey Hill Road. Um, we received the mitigation check from National Grid. Everything, all all the trees now that on Turkey Hill, the ones that were part of the public shade tree hearing request that was approved and the other trees that were the like from their hazard tree mitigation program they have taken everything down so i have to go back up to turkey hill and um now that everything is removed i have to go back up and take a look at some of the other trees that potentially um might need to have um some mitigation whether it's pruning or whether the other other removals because there seems to be quite a bit of dieback up there. So, mm -hmm. um, so I will just sort of continue on my weekly track of doing inspections. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so in a couple of things, so I sent you an email before the meeting. Uh, there is a, uh, mastery wardens and foresters, uh, field day. It's in August. It's on the 22nd and it's at the Upton sports persons club or, uh, which is in Upton mass. So it's an outdoor, it's an outdoor field day where there's going to be, um, plenty of vendors. There's going to be educational opportunities. Um, there's going to be, I hope it's, uh, I hope it's sold out. Although it's hard to sell out that place because it's so large, it's a chicken barbecue. Uh, so if anyone is interested in going, let me know because I can get the rate because I'm, um, Jordan and I are members. So anyone that wants to go, it's, I think it's $30 per person. And that includes lunch. It's a little bit of a ride, but you know, if you have nothing else to do on a, a hot August day and you want to go have some barbecue chicken. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's sort of a, a spinoff of a field day that we did a few years ago at Pine Banks park 
which is in uh, Mel, let's see, Melrose. And we did the uh, field day in, in Pine Banks Park because we didn't have a conference. That was our COVID year. That was 2020. So we basically had everyone that was uh, at vendors and whoever wanted to come to this for basically for free because they had paid to go to the conference that that year. No, sorry, that was 2021. Excuse me, 2021. So this is a similar thing. Um, there was actually a chapter of uh, Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters. Um, it's called Southeast Tree Wardens, and they got absorbed into the the overall um, corporation of Mass Tree Wardens back in 2019. So we don't have a lot of contact. We have some contact with people, uh, folks on the Cape uh, in our industry, but not a lot. So this is sort of a way to hopefully tie the state together a little bit. Um, on July 24th, I'm going to be giving a presentation to the town of Cummington at the community house. Sure. And the presentation is going to be a PowerPoint and it's going to be titled tree success stories, uh, or probably urban tree success stories. And, uh, I'm, have been going around the last, I don't know, couple of th three weeks, just doing different things, but then stopping and taking pictures of uh, trees that we've planted since 2016. And I'm, I'm going to put a PowerPoint presentation to talk about the trees that we've planted that have been successful in our urban landscape and sort of share that knowledge with the town of Cummington as they are trying, um, like many of the small communities, trying to find their voice, I, I guess I would say, in, in you know, tree, tree care, town tree care and tree maintenance. So that's a Cummington has, I think, like maybe 600 people, maybe 500 people that live in town. And they do have, they have a lot of urban street trees. A lot of the roadways are uh, old state layout. Um, and so they don't, they do not have the capacity for tree removals, tree trimming, tree planting. So I've uh, been in contact with that tree warden, the other, the tree warden in Plainfield. So, um, and then I'll be going back on the 28th of September to do a tree planting workshop, which is on a Saturday afternoon at one, but I'll send you, I'll send you the links if you're interested. Um, the tree success stories is kind of interesting because I'm sort of modeling that after um, <clears throat> a presentation that was given by Andy Hillman, who was the city forester uh, for the city of Ithaca, New York. So he gave a presentation a couple of years ago, which I thought was pretty cool. And he's gone back 20 years later and looked at all kinds of trees that he planted in his tenure, um, trees that were planted on, um, you know, underwire, uh, use where they use CU soil and parking lots. Um, and, and even, um, let's see where else on, on, uh, city parks, et cetera. So my goal is to do about 20 trees. I have to figure out how much time I have. I think I have an hour, but my goal is to do 20 trees, um, that we have, that have been successful. And then I'll sort of go over the, I'll talk a little bit about tree selection, tree, you know, the uh, grow, growing, growing mediums, et cetera. So, so I think it's going to be interesting. Um, and then to do the field day. So the tree planting workshops at one, it's going to be basically a workshop for about two hours where we plant a couple of trees in the town. Um, and I sort of walk them through uh, proper tree planting techniques and also talk about different types of uh, tree stock, how to pick out tree stock, you know, aftercare, et cetera. Um, so that I have was a our... question. Yes. Um, for that PowerPoint presentation, do you have before and after pictures? Um. I do not have before and after. The only way I could do before and after pictures would be if I went to Google Street View mm. and found uh, found some of the side streets in Northampton have not been driven since 2019. Oh. Huh. So, but most of the city's been canvassed, updated in 2023. Are the archival Google Streets available from past years? Good, good question. I think they are. I think in Google Streets up in the corner, there's if there are older ones available, there's some kind of a control. Okay. Hmm. If that wasn't an option, I was just what you were saying about success stories made me think um, 
it would be cool to have some before pictures of some of the plantings, even if we've done them, but just recently mm -hmm. to kind of like, say, for example, Prospect Street, you know, to take a picture looking down the street at the young trees and then come back 20 years later, you know, keep somehow keep that picture in a place where somebody would find it again and then do a, you know, be able to do a before and after in 20 years on some selected areas. Yep. That if you re, if you remember Molly back in the beginning the beginning days of the commission we uh, Lily and I and and we did a presentation at our Tree City USA event and we had a bunch of photographs of um, trees of before like way before like in the late eighteen hundreds early nineteen hundreds mm -hmm. um, and we did a bunch of comparisons to sort of. Um, promote the importance of obviously having a tree planting initiative and et cetera. And, uh, you know, tree, tree canopy cover. And we had a lot of those and courtesy like a Forbes library and other, other places. So I, I will look and Ken, thank you. You're always a wealth of knowledge. Uh, every time we have a meeting or something, I meet with you, I learn something new. So thank you. I didn't yeah, realize if, that. If you go to street view in the little black box in the top left, okay. it says see other dates. You okay. click on that. Looking at my street, it's pretty interesting. Ten years ago. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Okay. Let's see. What I, that's really all I have. But I do have a another item. Any any other questions about that? I'm sorry. Rich, I, I have a question. You're given the tree planning presentation on Sunday at one. Are are tree this those so called tree diapers? Are those are those now standard practice, or was that more experimental? It's a really good question. And so <laughs> there's a couple of things we've learned um, and we can talk about this later on, but I can sort of give you my 25 cent view at the moment. But the tree diapers um, are not effective unless you actually charge them prior to planting. So if you plant a tree and then go back out and put the tree diaper uh, not charged or not, you know, we soaked them overnight in a five gallon pail they're not charged. They have a very difficult time taking up soil moisture. Mm. So there's there the, the, and I, and I'm going to be meeting with eventually, I'm going to see the gentleman who actually um, has the patent on this diaper in August. And I'm going to actually have a conversation with him. Um, they, so they are standard practice, but one of the things that I'm concerned about is that the fact that the tree diapers on the top of the tree diaper, they are like landscape fabric. They're, they're actually dark, dark colored. They're black. Most of them. So I'm start. I'm questioning whether or not we're actually overheating the soil yeah. right, right within the tree ball area. Whereas like there's all this microbial activity that we're trying mm. to enhance with the biochar and the compost. And the question is, is the soil temperature and I haven't been out yet, but I have a, uh, I have a soil thermometer. So I'm going to go out and experiment and go underneath the tree diaper and see if the soil is warmer under there versus like five feet to the right or left of the tree. And if it is warmer, then I'm not, I'm not sure exactly scientifically like what the threshold is for uh, microbial activity to be dampened temperature wise, but it's definitely not a good thing. Um, so, you know, the other thing too, is, so that's sort of, cause I'm thinking about like black landscape fabric was all the rage it's everywhere, but as we all know, it's not effective, you know, it just, it's, it's, and it's actually what it does is it basically just heats the soil up and it actually creates more problems than actually it's worth in, in my opinion. And there's been multiple studies on this. There's been no studies that I can find on the tree diaper and their effect on the soil, but I'm starting to think outside the box a little bit. Um, I think our better bet, David, is to get the larger tree diapers, the two-piece tree diaper, so you can actually position it further out away from the tree, um, just like if you were to have two stakes in the ground, and we had, if we had the capacity, we would put two water bags on each stake on the outside of the tree ring, so you're actually putting soil moisture outside of where the root zone is presently, so the trees actually have to drive themselves, they have to grow oh. out to oh. the damp soil. Um, so I, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, it's, you know, for capacity purposes for staff, it's great because we, we haven't really had to, to water yet, but, but we've also been lucky because we've had pretty decent amounts of rain on average, half an inch to an inch a week. If you sort of average them all out. 
but I'm not so sure that in the long haul, the tree diaper is necessarily the right way to go. Jen. Thanks. Yeah. When you meet with the, with the gentleman, could you also ask about like what happens if, um, you know, we charge them and yep. they're out there and doing their thing. Um, what happens if it gets really droughty and they dry out, you know? Yep. Like, or what's the threshold that that happens or, because my guess is it won't be able to rehydrate unless we physically pick them up, soak and, them, you know. And then put them back. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, my question is, is there some correlation? Is there a correlation for us pre-charging them versus not pre-charging them? Is there a difference at that at the at the beginning stage? And then once they've been charged molecularly, however, that mm -hmm. uh, um hydrogel or gelscape or whatever the product they use that's inside of there now can absorb and that can have that symbiosis go back and forth. Mm -hmm. because, you know, we know like small, small tree belts don't get adequate water, you know, because when we, when we have these more, uh, these more intense, more frequent, heavy rainfalls, most of the water is actually going right down into the stormwater system. It's not actually getting to the ground evident as we've all dug in our gardens and our yards, you know, again, last year was like the second wettest year or third wettest year on record. So can't really use last year, but if we were in a situation like we were two years ago, when we had a drought and we this we were in the middle of the drought, we had like I don't know like sixty days of like no rain, mm -hmm. so it it was pretty crazy. So <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It's David. It's a, it's a good question, and I'm still like on the fence between the both of them. You know, trying to balance trying to balance what's to do right by the trees and the soil, and then trying to balance staffing and trying to maximize the amount of staff that we have and versus the watering because in any given year if we have a drought we're like a thousand trees are have water bags on them and that's two people full-time job for the duration of the drought so but i definitely have questions so um and that also brings me to an, just another point we we're talking about um, drought so we are you know obviously last year we had a lot of rain the year before we had a a, a an average year so the previous two years prior to that which would be 2020 2022 and 2021 we had drought and then we had rain in 2020 and then we had drought we're losing a lot of a lot of our larger older street trees sugar maples nori maples are starting to show uh, signs of decline so unfortunately Fortunately for us, we've planted a lot of trees, but unfortunately, a lot of the majestic trees that are in the older neighborhoods are struggling um, and they are having to be removed. So just a FYI, if you, you typically don't see any emails or people typically don't come to the commission when there's an issue with the removal, but I just wanted to make you aware of it in case they do. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to mention, and I'm over time, I apologize, is uh, I am I am going to um, the ISA um, annual conference, which is in Georgia this year. It's the 100th anniversary of, of ISA. So I will be at that trade show. So hopefully I will come back with some uh, inf good information for, to, to share with you, which I always seem to do. And I'm amazed at, um, and it's going to be, a, it's an international it's the international um, conference for them that's in there in in Georgia, where their home base is in Atlanta this now. So next year it's in New Zealand. So that would be interesting to go to. I've never been in New Zealand, but I don't know if we'll go that far. But um, so I will make some connections with folks, and if anyone has anything they're looking for me to bring back or any kind of particulars, we can talk off offline about it. Um, anybody have any questions? No. Okay. All right. Let's see. Our next item is setback planting initiative. So who would like to, you want me to sort of do run the, yes. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I am going to pull this up. Let's see. So we, um, at our last meeting, um, we talked about getting together with Tree Northampton to have a discussion um, about the setback planting initiative that we are, the pilot program that we've been talking about trying to put together um, as part of our, you know, as, as a as a sort of a, an old initiative, but reinvigorating this initiative so we could get some setback plantings using the data that we have that was created by um, by a Molly or and then shepherded to Kent. And now we have a ton of data. So we ended up having a, a very uh, short meeting with Tree Northampton. Um, and I just want to, so the setback, let's see, I'm just looking at the notes here. Hold on a second. Uh, da, da, da. So the target, the target area for the setback is going to be the quarter mile. We, 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 we thought we tried the quarter mile of downtown and maybe a little further outside of downtown based on observations that we see. Um, that we we have this we have the setback brochures and we have the door hangers those are all set to go. Um, we we have to um, notify the the mayor's office and whatever ward counselor in, those whatever wards we work in where we intersect we have to make sure that they know that these door hangers are being put out. Um, Chris Christina. Um, is uh, going to be contacting the Chamber of Commerce for to sort of see if they have any interest or input uh, to plant trees uh, in front of maybe some businesses that are not on Main Street, obviously, but off of Main Street. Um, we have the ability to actually get the assessor's database, although I think, Kent, you had mentioned that you might be able to get some of that data when we had questions about who owned what properties? Yeah, I have that. I'm actually, I want to do list is to match up okay. the addresses and the the sites that we have with the owner owner information. Yep. Um, okay. I, I don't have um, phone number or email, so okay. if we might want to think about putting together a letter to send out to the owners and the properties of interest. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we could, we, you know, we could start with the door hanger aspect once we, you know, once we canvas the areas, uh, I think, uh, we, uh, you know, we would probably want to start in August. So this way here, we could actually have sites to match up with plant material. So we have a good amount of plant material in the nursery, but we're going to need to put another order together for uh, fall planting and then potentially, um, Possibly if we have a large enough area, maybe do a setback planting. Sorry, not a setback, a bare root planting. This is also part of the just the normal fall planting project. Um, uh, we uh, probably would like to make a, at least an announcement about the setback planting initiative with the NESC, Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission, which would be helpful to sort of get the word out. The areas that are would be off limit um, would be uh, the, anything in the state layout or state right of way, um, Bridge Street, Grant Avenue to the bridge, Route Five from uh, the levee to the Oxbow, North King Street, uh, Damon Road to uh, the Hatfield Town Line. Uh, one of the other things that we uh, we had a little discussion about was the the tree belt that's on Damon Road with the new shared path that unfortunately is too small to support plant material. So that is unfortunately um, gonna be a little bit of an urban heat island. Um, I'm just trying to see what else I have on here. Yeah, that that's really about it. So, I mean, I think we're still sort of in, um, we're sort of still in the trying to just get all of the people lined up that are going to actually be doing this, but Christina's willing along with Tom Bassett um, and uh, Jen and Sue. Am I missing anybody? 
Um, uh, I think Ken uh, and David um, were. Yes, were, David. Ken, and also Bob Haxby as well. Mm -hmm. So there we, you know, it was, uh, so we have, we, we have quite a few folks that are interested in actually that are not part of the commission that are interested in sh supporting this and supporting this initiative. So it'd be nice. It's nice that we were able to sort of uh, meet with them and um, sort of talk about what kind of roles they could take on in order to help us put this together. So, you know, and any, any written, any um, written communications uh, that we are going to have with any, uh, any um, residents or businesses uh, or property owners would have to all be approved by the mayor, mayor's office, um, just so they're aware of what we're doing. So we just, we don't want the mayor's office or the city councilors in the wards to actually get phone calls saying there's people leaving things on my front doorstep and I don't want them or I do want them or what is this all about? So anyone have any questions? Anyone want to add anything? No. Radio silence. Okay. I wonder if we should have another Tree North Hampton meeting to really, I mean, we need to, at some point we need to get our, feet out there and start hanging door hangers. And I'm not sure when that should be um, or exactly who's going to do it. It's going to be interesting trying to find a door at some of these businesses, I think. But <laughs> So first step, Kent, I'll work with you, if I may, and we'll get an Excel spreadsheet with the sites ID'd and fill in the information we can. Then we'll ask um, the city for any other contact info. And we could draft up a communication. And then that can go so to the mayor first, so they know, so the mayor's office knows about this little project. And then um, reach out, start reaching out. So I guess we should get to work as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like maybe we better get our butts in gear. Yep. <laughs> um, if we want to be able to plant in September, is that the goal? Um, we'll have it all organized by August, I think. Organized by That's August. Tight. Yeah. But maybe I mean, we can just, you know, we'll narrow in on the few prime locations and and the yeah. bare roots, so we'll be ready to hit the ground running for planting season. And it'll be an ongoing project. Sometimes they take multiple years to get the property owners yeah. on board. All right. Gotta start somewhere. It does. And I mean, I'm not, you know, depending on the weather, we've found in September sometimes it's too hot. In the last couple of years, we've ended up starting planting in like the last week of September and then into October and then so going forward. So we have, we have time, but it would be great the first step of we could actually get the spreadsheet put together and then try to uh, just better understand because I, I can send an email to the mayor's office and the city councilors of the, the ward that will be affected. So they know that we're doing this and then we can just sort of, you know, sort of move at our own pace. Um, you know, there's also other plantings to be done in the fall as well. Not, not setbacks. So, so it, as far as, I think, um, and I don't want to speak for Tree Northampton, but I just, as far as keeping the volunteers um, moving, I think there's plenty to keep them moving. Um, so we, you know, we can, it, and Sue's right, it, sometimes it does take a lot of back and forth, it takes a little negotiation. When you think you have it all set, someone shows up and they are not too happy because they they were not informed and we didn't know they needed to be informed, et cetera. So that, that's happened to us many times. So yeah. Um, but yeah, whenever Sue, if you need a hand with that spreadsheet, or just let me know how I can and help I think out. It's me. I've been sort of procrastinating and spending time out on my bicycle and in my garden instead of at my Kent, deck. But Kent, there's nothing wrong with that. It's summer. This is what I know. Said. It's hard to want to sit at my desk. Yeah, and it's me too. I haven't worked on it. We it's will. Rainy, it's going to be a rainy weekend, so maybe I'll get some work done. Uh, I'll be around too this weekend. Every okay. Weekend communicate. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? I'm just going to leave this on the agenda. 
sort of as a rolling item. Okay. Uh, the next uh, item is the spring planting report. Jen, are you wanting to do a screen share? Okay. I can, or I can just read the notes, whatever, whatever is your preference. Let's do a screen. Let's, is, okay. let's, let's do a screen share. Okay. So I need to go, let's see. It looks, it looks cool. You did a, you, you did a really nice job and it'd be nice to. Uh, let me just, um, I go to share. Yep. Is you have to you have to, is it up on your screen somewhere? Oh, uh, let's see. Hold on one second. Got to, you just I'm having it a hard time getting uh who can share. Okay. All right. I got my the thing up there, so I have video. How do I you gotta okay. click click share screen on the bottom of your window, the zoom window? Right. And then it's going to give you, it'll give you options probably. Oh, my choice, my choice, my choice. That's right, 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 right. Okay, I got it. I haven't done this very many times. Okay. Beautiful. That's it. Right, everybody, great. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, everybody see that? that? Okay. Got it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. So we had a total of 11 plantings. We started uh, April um, 20th and ended on June 12th. That's a little longer than we normally plant, but it, uh, it was stayed kind of cool. We had a little bump of heat in there, but um, generally we have two plantings a week, Monday and Wednesday mornings, and we plant between five and 10 trees each planting. Usually hmm. we plant six or seven because that's kind of the best capacity uh, for the DPW. Uh, we had a couple dates we missed, and they were due to um, weather, DPW staffing, and Memorial Day, which I didn't really track very well, so now I I do know about Memorial Day. Uh, we planted a total of 68 trees. 18 were setbacks, which is between one-third and a quarter of all the trees we planted were setbacks. So that's a, that's, that's a good piece of data to have. Um, hmm. Rest were in tree belts right away, or in the set we planted a few in the, the cemeteries. Uh, we have a total. We had a total of uh, twenty different. I'm going to call them species. Really, they're genus, but um, more people <laughs> understand that word. So, uh, we had one brand new species added: hop hornbeam, uh, which we haven't planted. It's a good. Uh, it's a good uh, diversity, native diversity. All the trees we uh, planted came from grow bags and uh, ball and burlap. Um, most of them were from grow bags and we used uh, both Amherst Nursery and Chestnut Ridge. Uh, the total number of volunteer planting hours, that's only planting. That's not planning or scheduling or going to the nursery or any of that. We do, we are tracking that um, and that'll be kind of at the end of the year when uh, Rich fills out the uh, Tree City USA application. So just hours at the planting uh, is 102 uh, people hours. Uh, we have been using tree diapers instead of gator bags and um, we've switched a little bit the way we are planting. Um, instead of mixing the compost into the um, soil that we remove from the hole. We put the fertilizer in with the soil and mix it, put it back, put the soil, backfill the native soil, and then we top dress the compost on the top instead of mixing it with the soil. And the idea is that it's going to be like slow release fertilizer and uh, microbial injection as slowly as the water pushes it into the soil. Um, we had some great community partnerships. Um, Northampton Rotary Club was our first planting on Ice Pond Drive. Uh, we planted a, uh, 12 trees, six frontier elms, and six espresso Kentucky coffee trees that um, were replacements for removed ash due to emerald ash borer. And we, do, we will have a couple other succession plantings, probably one in the fall uh, for, um, due to emerald ash borer. Uh, we uh, coordinated with Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity 
um, they needed to do a planting that was a, um, uh, oh shoot, um, where they cut down the trees when they're not supposed to, what's it? Uh, mitigation. mitigation. Yeah, mitigation, thank you. That word was escaping me. Um, and we planted uh, three Winter King Hawthorns and three Swamp White Oaks. So we just provide volunteer hours. They purchase the trees. And um, we they had some volunteers too. So we kind of taught them how to properly plant trees. So that was kind of interesting. And uh, we also helped them plant uh, 30, 31 two gallon native shrubs that were also mitigation for the wetland that's behind the housing units on Burt's Pit Road. So it was a good, um, it was a very nice, um, it was a great day. The volunteers really liked it. And it was kind of a good relationship that I think is gonna be potentially ongoing and to intervene before um, mitigation is necessary. So I think there's three more trees that have to be planted there. Uh, some that they, they weren't ready yet. Uh, the area still had uh, construction stuff. Uh, we connected with Northampton High School Science Department um, to they bag the tree whips. This is the second year we done we've done that with students. The uh, two science teachers are super enthusiastic. It um, you know they really set up. We work in a parking lot behind the um, stadium, and they uh, really provide everything. And I bring the the compost and the trees and my talk to them about Arbor Day and and then they help and uh it's a great it's a the students have fun uh some of the ice pond drive neighbors also assisted with uh rotary club and then we had uh Stoddard Street neighbors assisted when we planted uh Michael's house property on the uh lower section of Stoddard Street and on Ravel Street we had uh uh Hackberry planted there that a resident had um asked to have a little memorial for a gentleman that uh passed away uh in that on that street in the neighborhood so they came out and um you know had a little uh memorial for the gentleman so so that's the summary of any um of this spring so uh, we figured a bunch of stuff out. We're still, um, you know, there's some bottlenecks and blips and, you know, it's, uh, you know, Rob and Alicia did uh, a lot. <laughs> and it's still uncovering everything that has to be done. So, uh, you know, I think we've got some new people who are involved um, with uh, different parts. Uh, people have stepped up and... Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's it's going well. The, the particularly, I should I want to um, uh, shout out Christina Peterson. She's done an incredible job with setbacks. She mm -hmm. uh, um, is you know processing them when they come in and uh, direct communication with Sue and I. Um, when there's questions, we've gotten um, I've been involved or. Uh, Jordan's been helping out with choosing tree species and uh, she, there, it's a lot of contacts. It's a lot of touches to get one tree planted. So, um, or two setback trees. Um, there was one place on Acrebrook Drive, we planted five trees in a person's yard. Hmm. So that's a lot of trees. It was a ranch house with a corner lot and there was zero trees. So, um, that was a that was a big win. She's done a great job, and I I really um, just she's very efficient, really on it. And so I really want to appreciate her publicly. So, any questions? Yeah, Sue, so you met you mentioned planting on Monday and Wednesday, but I recall being out on Saturdays. Oh, did I do? Oh, whoops, that's incorrect. Thank you. <laughs> Wednesday and oops, Saturday and Wednesday. I can change that right now. Wow. Thank you for catching that. That uh I don't know. Maybe because I send the list on Mondays. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we did plant on Saturday. Um, my question is um after you plant the trees, um, I don't know if any of these trees are on that list that that Kent has been working with. 
Um, but do you, you know, cross off and say this one's done? Yeah, we have. A, that's a good question. Uh, Sue and I work with a large spreadsheet that we call the tree tracker, and it has various tabs on it. And that's kind of like the brain of the operation. And Sue, thank God, handles the spreadsheet. And <laughs> Sue and I meet uh, every week and um, sit down physically together usually and go over the spreadsheet, deal with the emails, see where we're at. Um, and uh, we do have a record of, um, we assign trees to sites on that. So ones that haven't been planted yet are on there, uh, but that we have addresses and whether they're dig safe or not. And then uh, we do have, we keep the address and we strike it out. So you can mm -hmm. still see, we still have the data. Um, when I send Rich um, the list for the week, that is also in a, in a smaller spreadsheet that he can move and dump wherever he needs to do that. So we right. do have a record of everything in more than one place. And then we, you know, we didn't, we weren't able to plant all the ones that we had trees assigned and addresses and agreements um, or uh, spaces. So we do have a, a carryover, a chunk of trees, a carry, I don't know how many that is. It's not a huge amount, but, um, and then Christine is continuing to connect with people about uh, setback requests. So those probably will, we try to use up, we have a list of uh, trees that we have left. So we try to use those if we can, but we will also make, a, if somebody has a request, a specific request, or we really need a certain tree that we used up, we can, um, we can get more in the fall. that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Probably more info than you really asked. <laughs> no, you're totally, you're totally on target with the record keeping. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be, or you lose your mind. <laughs> yeah. I would so like to comment. Yeah. I'd like to say, Jen, this report is fantastic. And I think it's really important for helping um, commission and the public and all of us mm -hmm. understand some of the important aspects of this. I'm glad you shout, gave a shout out to Christina Peterson. Um, also, um, Bob Haxby and Tom Bassett have been, you know, getting positioned to do more for the setbacks and, and Jordan as well. But huge thanks, Jen, for your leadership on this. It's just phenomenal. Deciding how to figure out a planting is not easy. You ha there's a lot of moving pieces. Is it dig safe? Where are the locations? Is it, does it mix, you know, getting the trees delivered to the right places and uh, the right kind of tree and having, you know, everything work is a lot. And thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I will, I will ditto what Sue said. Um, and come from my perspective, after working for the city for many years, and many years we didn't plant any trees, if if we had this type of energy and organization 30 years ago, um, we would uh, we would be um, in a, in a in a probably a, a better place, but we're in a really good place. You know, I I also. Forgot to mention that I did go to the Tree City USA Award, and this dovetails into this because we did get our growth award for the eighth year running. Wow. And the majority of the growth award is from tree planting, uh, volunteer efforts, uh, and professional development. Um, so we're a 17 year uh, Tree City USA and eight year running growth award, and we will probably continue to get the growth award. Um, and also the pruning, also the, the the pruning operation from last winter, not this, not this, uh, not this past winter, the the previous winter, uh, also counted towards the growth award. So it's a com it's really a combination, but it's really like the the volunteer effort and the effort that all of you um, put forward 
to make this initiative happen is just incredible. Yep. You know, it makes me very proud to talk to other um, other communities, other tree wardens, other municipal leaders, other tree advocates around the Commonwealth that like, how do you guys do it? I'm like, well, we got this great group of people and, I, and this is what we've done. And this is, I said, it's still, it's sort of like a pencil and a pencil sharpener. We're still slowly sharpening it and getting it sharper and sharper and sharper. And, you know, um, I, again, thank you very much, Jen. That's a great uh, summary. Um, I think that is um, a nice, nice summary to have. It gives the commission a little perspective. So it was just sort of talking to each other, talking at each other in essence, not that we're doing that, but I think it's nice to see it on paper. Thanks. I yeah. just want to mention one quick thing about pruning um, that probably a lot of people don't realize. Um, you know, one of the main goals of the pruning these young trees is um, way down the road, preventing failure in times of storms and as the trees age. And, um, you know, we're doing, you know, the, we're getting uh, uh, more severe climate events. And um, it's, it's just a really important thing that um, there's a lot of resources, emergency resources that have to be used when trees fail. And I, I, maybe Rich has a better handle on the percentage. But to me, a really high percentage of the trees I see fail are, it's a structural issue. You know, they weren't planted correctly or they weren't pruned when they were young. So they have these, you know, big co-dominant leaders and stuff like that and just can't handle storms. Um, and many of the trees that we're planting, especially um, in tree belts, are more um, uh, uh, leaders central leader dominated and they also uh, are better storm resilient trees. So uh, things like sweet gum is a, a, I call them climate change trees. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention that, like it's, you know, might think we're just trying to keep them from people bonking their head on the sidewalk, but you know, there's a bigger picture longer out. That's super important. You know, that's, that's resources, saving the city resources. So. Yep. Mm. Yeah, it is clearly, and I would agree with you. The majority of tree uh, verse the uh, tree damage calls that we get is they're related to poor uh, poor architecture, poor structure. Trees that were never pruned, they were just planted, and then they got to be too big uh, for the location they're in. And then basically, we're, you're called in to do some sort of mitigation pruning of some sort. But by that point, the tree has like a whole bunch of multiple leaders uh, they're everywhere and then of course the other phenomenon of planting large canopy trees under utility wires uh even even back in the day when so when the when the uh, uh the american elms were you know leaving our landscape we came back as a municipality and we planted a lot of norway maples under utility lines i don't know why mm. but there, but there was also not the information um, there wasn't the um, underwire tree planting initiatives um, and most underwire trees at the time were used for more ornamental plantings. They were not utilized for street tree plantings. And so that's, so we've totally changed that dynamic in our own community, uh, which is, which is great. I mean, I still go to other communities and talk to other people that are like, yeah, we, we don't plant anything under the wires. And I'm like, I, I said, but you got a whole tree belt there and you can do under, what's, what's an underwire tree or where do you get those from? And so it's just really interesting. You know, as Rob, as Rob said in 2016, I think it was 2016, right? South Street was our like our grand experiment with underwire trees. You know, we had never done underwire tree planting sporadically, yes, here or there, but literally like just planting a whole street and trying to, figure out what a balance would look like. Um, and it's still, you know, it's, we, we, we've been replacing trees as we need them, but it's just, just pretty amazing. I, I, I can't tell you how, I mean, for somebody who's worked here for all the time I've had and the knowledge that I have, this program would have, this whole initiative would have not happened if it wasn't for the residents and the, re and all the volunteers that have put their time and energy into this. So mm -hmm. I, I can't thank you enough. Um, um, any other questions for Jen? 
before we move on. So I left a little block of time uh, at the end of the meeting for any other business not anticipated by the chair. And I do, uh, does that, before I ask David a question, does anyone have anything they would like to talk about? Okay. Uh, David, um, I saw uh, you sent me an email the other day about the Jackson Street School. Uh, yes. Watering has, did, did um, anyone from the school follow up with you? No, not, not yet. I sent it to the principal, Lauren Brown. Yes. And no, she did not follow up. Okay. All right. So those trees that are in the back, I was over there the other day. That's the reason I'm asking. I was looking at, um, you're probably familiar with, there's a oak, a dead oak that's on private property that's overhanging the school. Yeah. I'm trying to work with the school department to find a way to get rid of the, at least the overhanging limbs that are over the school year, uh, ground so they don't uh, come in contact with uh, anyone. So I was over there and I saw those trees and that's what prompted me to uh, just, I figured I'd see you and just ask you and, and if you had um, had any conversation with any further conversation. No, I haven't. Okay. And then my other question is, is that are you still wanting to, we had talked in our last meeting or maybe the meeting before about walking around JFK school to sort of uh no. in july to sort of nail sort of maybe nail down our planting for potentially the spring of 25 at JFK. yeah yeah actually so i think uh next monday i believe at nine or nine thirty or ten and i can get you the details but tony kuzners yep and and jen and i have ten, have plans to to walk the the campus Okay, and, I, and would and would love you to join. Now yeah, it might be good yeah. to do that before Monday, but Jen, what 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 are you going to say? Can you give me the date again on that? Just yeah, um, but you can just email me. We don't have to spend time in the meeting about right. that, okay. or text me. Either way, I okay. I will. I just want to make sure I I've got it. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to be there until after eleven. Okay, if if that's the if that plan holds true. Like, okay, just to, so between 11 and four or something. Yeah. 11 okay. and three, 11 and three 30 is fine. Yes, I can do that, but I can't do anything before. I can't do anything before. Let me just hold on. Let me just double check my calendar. Maybe. You're talking about the eighth. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I feel like I have something else that day, but let me just look. No, I just, I have a, a two hour meeting in the morning, nine to 11 but i can be available after 11 30 if if, if if tony's amenable to that yeah all right well so currently it's scheduled for 9 30 but i'll see if we can push it back okay and if, you, and if you can't that's fine i i trust your judgment and if you want to go over there and walk before that i could okay. meet you friday so i know it's around the holiday you might not get a response from anyone so if you want to go over and meet on friday just just shoot me a text message we can take a walk around Okay. All right. If you're if you're available, I might be able to. Let me see. Uh, you're talking the fifth. Yes. Uh, depending what time. Uh, I'm. I, it would be great for me to be. Sometimes it's good for me to be there when you're there, Russ. Uh, Rich. So yeah. It's fine. If, if, that's, David, if that's okay, just give me just give me the time. I, I I will defer that to David if he's available because he's sort of leading the show here on this one. So I don't and know if you can't. That's know. okay. No. Okay. How about I'll be in touch after after the meeting. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um. Anyone else have any other business? Um. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about um. Let's talk a little bit about the. I want to talk about the significant tree ordinance. So now that I believe the city budget is squared away, um, I would like to revisit the significant tree ordinance, the draft that we have that we put together that was uh, that we worked on for uh, probably a year and a half. Mm -hmm. That actually is now um, that was approved by Office of Planning and Sustainability. 
I would like to, I, what I would like to do is I would like to meet with Carolyn sometime in August or maybe later in this month to sort of go over that draft to make sure that everything in the draft that we all agreed to is still good. Uh, and then I would ask the mayor's office to potentially um, move that document forward in September to, to, you know, uh, to, to the full council. And then it would be um, forward. It would be if, if the council accepts that they would move it off to a committee and then it would end up going through the whole process where they go through a public hearing after its review. So that's sort of what the timetable is. Again, it's entirely up to the mayor. Um, but I would like to, with your approval, I would like to go and meet with Carolyn just to go over the particulars to refresh our, um, to refresh our draft. The other thing too, is that I also would like to have Carolyn uh, if she's willing to uh, also be there to answer questions, because I, I will, so someone will have to go to the city, most likely me, will have to go to the city council meeting. So when this is presented to the council, if there's questions before it's referred out, um, they can get answered by either myself or Carolyn, because I, it would be uh, good to have uh, Carolyn there, because I think we worked hard with planning and sustainability to make this the draft that it was, or draft that it is, I should say. So that's just the time that's the tentative timetable in my head, but I will report out um, a little more at our August meeting. So anyone have any questions? Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for moving it forward. Is that draft available someplace? I'd be interested in looking at it. Um. Yes. It is available. Let me get back to you on that. Okay, hey, thank you. Yep. Any other questions, comments, things not anticipated by the chair? Nothing. Radio sign. Everyone's like in their summer, like, I want to go outside and work in my garden mode right now. <laughs> um, too hot. <laughs> not too It is actually, it is actually hot today. Um, but it's been two nights in a row. The weather's been nice for sleeping though. It's mm -hmm. been in the fifties. So yeah, great. It really has been. Okay. Um, I mean, we have half an hour, so if anyone wants anything or to talk about anything they can, or we can, I would entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting early. If people would like to do that. I have kind of a random question. Sure. Somebody sent out recently, I forget where, a list of Massachusetts certified arborists and said, if your arborist is not on this list, then don't hire them. And I noticed Rich is not on the list. And I know you're an ISA certified arborist. And just wondering what the distinction is. And if this person is off base saying, only hire Massachusetts certified arborists. Who uh, may I ask who sent it, or did it come from an entity? No, it was. I have to check my email. It was. It was like from. I think it was from the Cambridge Tree List, actually. So it was a private email. Okay. Uh, so like the, the distinction is uh, that you know I'm a board certified master arborist through ISA. So my certification um, is uh, recognized worldwide. By the way, I just want to say, I don't mean this is questioning your credentials. Oh, no, 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 in not at all. I just, I, it that way. No, no, no. I, I, it's, it's interesting to me. Um, maybe the individual or the folks had a bad experience with um, some other certified arborists, but there are a lot of, there are um, mass certified arborists, but they can only, uh, their, their certification is only good for the state of Massachusetts. So ISA certified arborists are, and their credentials are can be utilized um, worldwide. I think I'll, I'll write back and say that there are other valid arborist credentials. Uh, there, 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 there are. And the other thing, too, is that unfortunately, a lot of private, not a lot, some tree care companies bill them, say they are, they may say they are arborists, but they actually don't hold the certification. So, mm -hmm. you know, what happens is that 
unfortunately, because, you know, tree care companies are selling a product. Sometimes what happens is things get billed a certain way or things get discussed a certain way. And basically what I tell residents in the city, if they want, um, to, you know, they want to have a certified, I said, make sure you have a cert arborist who's certified that you can verify and two that they carry liability insurance. Cause those are two really important things, um, to basically indemnify the property owner. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, thanks. I, I'll write back to this person. I just I found it. It is from a Cambridge tree list, but pretty dramatic saying if there, somebody's not on the list, they should not be working on Massachusetts trees. Mm. And, yeah, that's that's uh that's on that's I disagree with that. There's a lot of really, you know, there's there's twenty six thousand, twenty eight thousand ISA certified arborists, and there's probably worldwide and there's probably like 1500 to 1800 board certified master arborists worldwide so i mean in in um in the grand scheme of things the tree care industry is actually very small if you were to compare it to um the credentialized tree care industry is very small in comparison to like the civil engineer society or civil engineers there's many civil engineers around the world and it's also been a profession that's been certified um, for a very long time. So, um, but I mean, I, unfortunately, maybe they had a bad experience. I, I'm, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure, but yeah. All maybe right. I'll have some more, if you have some more information, I'd be curious. You can just read, just get a hold of me offline. Cause I'm kind of interested, curious as to what, what happened. Not that I'm, not that I'm advocating yeah. for using one or the other, but. Well, I can send you this email. There's no backstory. It just basically says, it's a link to the Massachusetts Arborist Association yep. um, list of certified arborists. And it says if they're not on this list, they should not be working on Massachusetts trees. Yeah, that's that's definitely a miss. That's a, that's hmm. not accurate. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll push back on it. Yep. Any other questions, comments? None. All right. Would we take a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll move it. Excellent. Uh, do we have a second? I second. All right. All right. We have a motion on the floor to adjourn the meeting. We have a, by Molly and a second by Rich Parrish. Uh, all in favor, just raise your hands. Thank you very much. Have a good fourth, everybody.